G'day, and welcome to the Intramers. I'm XQ. Today I'm joined by the lovely Algrid. How are you doing, mate? I'm doing good. We're kicking bit off... Warm, bit warm still, but, but yeah. yeah. Doing good. Well, that is the summer down here in the Southern Hemisphere. I'm That's hearing true. reports of some people that are living in f negative 45 degrees, which is kind of crazy to me. I... Uh, not nice. Yeah, nice little air conditioning you boys are having up there in the Northern Hemisphere at this time of year. Anyway, so this is going to be a new series that we're kicking off based on, um, we had a lot of feedback on the Endeavour video, um, and we wanted, there was a few more ships that we wanted to look at like that, and so we're going to call this series Ship Scrutiny, um, and this is just ships, that, some of the ships that we keep recommending, like the Endeavour, uh, and the Crucible is another one. Um, and, and we're going to look at other ships, like why they're good value and why they're bad value and, and stuff like that. So th if that's the type of thing you're interested in from Fix My Fleet, this will be um, a follow-on series from that. So more of a deep dive into the ships. It's kind of giving a, rather than going through every time and explaining why this ship is so good, it, this is the, see this video whenever we recommend a Crucible and yes. you'll understand some of the reasons why same as same as when you know we talk about the Endeavour see the Endeavour video and that explains yeah. some of the reasons why so I these are the videos card. so we can go see the card see the card <laughs> that's right all right um we're also doing still doing the F7A giveaway along with the um Super Hornet um again if you leave it in the comment you leave a hashtag jag in the comments below for your chance to win what I just said so yeah all right, well, with and that said... Don't forget to subscribe as well because it gets drawn and when we reach 12 and a half. Yes. Thousand. So that's that's the limit. Once we hit 12 and a half thousand subscribers, uh, that's when it'll be drawn. So, yeah. All right. Um, kicking it off. The Crucible. I'll let you take it off, Agrid. Where do you want to start? I think the very beginning. Look, when I, when I started back in the game, one of the things that really caught my attention was the Crucible. It wasn't a pew-pew ship. And to me, that said, this was a game that was going well beyond most space sims. Mm. It wasn't just go out there and shoot them up. It was actually a ship dedicated to being able to repair um, ships. And in the original uh, brief, I was just having a look at um, Jump Point number, Jump Point Volume 3. The last issue was all on the Crucible. You can, if you're a subscriber, go back and have a look at it. If you're not, I'm sure you can actually find it on Reddit or elsewhere that's been posted. But... There were actually three variants of this ship originally uh, envisaged. One was basically the repair ship, and they did originally talk about it building scaffolds and all the other things. The beauty of this ship was it had the scarab, and the scarab was basically a, a, a garage where you could actually park a small fighter, i.e. a hornet, or a medium fighter, a hornet. Um, or you could actually have it like it is in the picture. It was also designed and built as a ship for repairing capital ships, so it was multiple pictures of art out there um and you'll find just, just, you'll actually find this picture in jump point number three just uh, to point out point i agree oh, the top one has the scarab and the bottom one doesn't have the yeah. scarab so yeah i'm sorry now, the top picture there has the garage already attached the bottom one has it detached uh this was also going to be um a variant that had refuel and rearm and it's also going to be the tug i think the tug has been since split off but yeah uh, in terms of repair, this is the the top of the tier, the top tier repair ship, dedicated for being able to repair capital ships. Um, so for me, that was like the golden goose. For, for me, like. it's so basically, if you're into the the Vulcan, this is the ship that we recommend instead. Is the way I'd put it. Um, yeah. And and I. Uh, there are a lot of things with this ship that um, because of the Vulcan, you can look at what the Vulcan does and you can naturally assume they're going to occur in this. So the fact that, like Agrid mentioned with the Scarab, and you can land ships in it, that also means it has a cargo bay. So that also means that you can rearm them, refuel them, and repair them, just like a Vulcan, but you can do all three at the same time, where it can only mm. do one drone at a time, and it's only got 12 um, SCU. Uh, I don't quite remember the, the amount of cargo in this ship, but I know it's quite substantial compared to the Vulcan, let's put it that way. Um, certainly. Sorry, go on. No, 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 go ahead. I was going to say, certainly in the jump point, I actually talked about a uh, storage and loading area, mm. which was different from a garage. So that was that actually surprised me in the original notes. Whether that's still there, um, I don't know. This picture here certainly comes from that time. 
um, the picture would be the image of an of, well in that picture it's repairing an Idris mm. uh, this it was this is designed or put forward after they've already grown the Idris so this is a that gives a kind of scale of the of the, the crystal I can't, I can't where I remember where I remember this from Agri, but you might better remember it for me but someone was talking about drones on this ship as well in the last 12 months, I remember uh, we, that came up I through discussions. I actually did read that in the jump point as I was scanning yeah. through, just, just while you were sitting up the last screen, I was looking through and I thought I actually read drones as well. Yeah. Um, I'd have to go back and have a look to, mm. to confirm that. But... But point, point being that we're trying to get out of here, if you can kind of get what we're trying to get out between this and the Vulcan, is that this ship is so old, it's not only in the old metrics, but there's a lot of, the chances are that it's going to be reconcepted. So, um, if it stays true to how it is, it's going to grow. It's probably going to gain more features. Um, it's already got features that you don't really think about because it wasn't really explained, but because the Vulcan had them explained, you can very quickly, um, apply them to this. Um, so, so let's, let's go so over some of the things that have changed in our grid, um, leading to why we think it's going to grow. Um, and the first one for me, which is, is the obvious one is that. A lot of the ships were smaller um, and they've grown. And the, the obvious one is the the, the, the Hornets. Um, that had mm. a rework and they grew. Um, but not only that, uh, one of the ones that someone, one of our supporters reminded of before we started recording was the old Cutlass can fit in it, but with the roof, roof cut off. So now the Cutlass mm. has grown. Chances are um, that's going to grow as well. And what that leads me to believe, and you, you can checking your two cents here as well is i think this scarab is basically a small landing pad which mm. essentially with the roof off i think the biggest ship you could fit in it is a freelancer much like a small landing pad what are your thoughts it, on it, that? yes and and that's the other thing with the with the scarab the scarab was always a grudge you could either have open mm. for ships that were too tall or you could actually close it if you could close it that meant you didn't have to walk, be walking around in either you could actually be yep just a normal suit easier to get into tight places etc if it was open you had to be an either i did i remember talk about if the ship was too big to land on the landing pad you could kind of almost dock it in and mm -hmm. then kind of have it hanging up the end so you could have your retaliator hanging off the edge of the, the pad type thing and fix it and then do whatever you needed same with a connie but certainly that landing pad and the idea of that landing pad idea really does work and the idea of opening the scarab to put a freelancer on or a cutlass on or closing it up if you've got a, a cutlass um i think will still remain you've given me a cool little idea you know how we talked and this is a tangent again sorry but um how we were talking about the possible rework wouldn't it be kind of cool if it had an adjustable dock that could go up and down those arms and so that way if you <laughs> didn't want to put it in the scarab you could dock to it and repair it while it was docked that would be kind of cool just chucking that out there as an idea oh, if you're listening well, cag well, when you think of the very original talk of this ship, this ship was originally supposed to come with um, not a scarab, but scaffolding. Yes. And so it would actually build scaffolding around the capital ships it was working on and then kind of repair them. And that and the idea was that several crucibles could get together and build this scaffolding to to repair the ship. Yeah. That, certainly got, that certainly seems to have gone by the board and been replaced by this this garage incidentally if you go into the um the ship view and you look at the the wire matrix when you go into the garage you can actually see a hornet sitting in the garage mm. uh, so it's actually planned for a hornet to be in there and so as the hornet's grown back, this, back ha garage this has to, to grow yeah and, and i think every, just I, look, knowing what you know about the pads and stuff and the way they've changed um it just like to save time if everything that can submit on a, a small pad was what so they basically if they take a small pad and build this ship around it that to me would take the smallest amount of time to get them to get this ship out the door um and i think that's where they're going to go um based on that and the old metrics and we know every ship that was made on the old metrics has absolutely ballooned and this and the endeavor are the last two left from that era mm. And and they could still, you know, they could still have it with a garage opens for tall ships. And that mm -hmm. makes it unique in terms of ships that have got a landing pad. Mm. Because 
not many ships that you know have a landing pad. The, the Carrack is a classic example. Mm -hmm. You can actually land a an Aurora in the pad and close it up, mm -hmm. but you can't land a, an Arrow or a or many other ships or even a, a Mustang because it's too tall. The hundred series doesn't even fit unless you've got the wheels down because it's too tall. Mm -hmm. And so this is a ship that kind of fits into that, but it's actually designed with that idea. You can either repair it with it open, close it up with a ship that's down. So. Mm. Um, so there's two other big things for me with this ship that I also think add to it. Um, or one, one, Actually, one, one that's tangent to that would be it's the only ship in the entire game that can modify its central mass. Um, mm -hmm. And those engines on either side can actually shift backwards and forwards along that outside rail in the picture if you kind of wait i'll point with my finger down there um they actually can be slide backwards and forwards yeah thanks <laughs> um but the but that yeah so when you have a ship in the, the scarab on and there's and when you put a ship in it it makes it make it changes the weight of the ship because those ships cost way so much more than normal cargo they actually said in 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 the original concept we had to figure out a way to get this to fly properly and that's how they've done it so you can actually adjust your central mash and no other ship can do that um and i think that's kind of cool um and it also means you can probably carry some other things in there that you're probably not meant to carry in there as well in because of that central mass and the other thing that this ship also has that other ships don't have is the bridge this yeah. is the only ship with a rotating bridge it's you know rotating restaurant you know, eat your heart out, Crucible's got it covered. But that means you're going backwards, turn your bridge, you're not, you're not going forwards. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the only ship with that uniqueness. And it, it's just just the, the things that it does and also the uniqueness of the ship mm. and, the, and the things it's supposed to do just make me gush. I, <laughs> I can't do it any other way. I'm gushing. And, and besides the Carrick, it's one of the only big ships we have at the moment from Anvil, um, mm. which, which is... Again, I, I, I want to see more big ships on them. Um, the last thing I've got written down here is that when this ship was concepted, vehicles never existed. Um, yep. And I, I actually think the Scarab is probably going to get a few changes based on that. I actually think they'll probably allow this ship to land and that Scarab will have a bit of a ramp at the front. Uh, so you can actually drive vehicles up into it and they can be repaired inside it. Now, whether or not a Scarab can enclose a tonk is a different kettle of fish but it may be able to at least repair the vehicles even with the lid open so to speak mm -hmm. or the roof off um I, I think that would be a no-brainer and if it can't do that i think it's very a very clear sign that maybe the medium or the large repair uh, variant because we we know we've got the vulcan in the small slot this in the capital and they've said that they've want to get a ship in each uh, size category that one of those two ships, maybe the medium, I'd think maybe in that bracket, um, mm. that type of ship might be tailored at specifically going down to planet and repairing those um, vehicles on planet. Um, I, I think that's almost a no-brainer at this point, some kind of ship that can do that, Agri. Would you would you kind of agree yeah. something like that? Yeah, I think a dedicated um, vehicle transport repair ship would make, would make sense. Yeah. Um, so that, I was going to say... You know, I was just going to say that might be something that this loses, but I'd hopefully hope that it's something that it retains. Agard, you were going to say? I, I think um, you could see that. If it can take a tank or a tonk um, and it can enclose it, mm. I think I think this ship would, would be able to land. And I think <laughs> one of the changes to a car, yeah, well, you know. <laughs> You've just made you've made me think of last week when we were talking about the Hercules and I kept trying to push it down. You guys pushing it up. This is the yep. ship. By the way, this ship can uh, statistically fit six tonks in it because of the size of it on on that thing. So if this could be the carrier that carries six tonks and the Hercules can only carry two, all of a sudden it's not a medium yep. high anymore. It, the Hercules is very much a medium. I do want to point it's, that uh, out. It's certainly look. I think. Uh, for me, this ship is one of those great ships. It's at the mm. price point. It's one of those ships we know is going to grow. It, it's one of those unique ships. Mm. Repair is, I think, underrated. Yeah. How many times do you have to go back and repair their ships? Or abandon their ships because they can't? 
I remember back when I got this ship, Algrid, you and Hayes convinced me to get it. And at the time, we had about 600 members in our org. And at the time, you and Hayes were the only two that had one. Now, this is going back to 2014, and it's probably changed a bit, but I would still argue this is probably one of those ships that not a lot of people own. It would be one of the rarer ones. And I think it's because a lot of people... I I don't know whether it's just because it's not really a pew-pew ship. It's... It's mm. you know it's repair it's it's your healer it, it's mm. if you're talking MMO you know traditional MMOs it's your healer. You, you've um, just you've just hit another thing too. You know when we were talking about the Genesis Starliner and they're like mm. they've increased the price because from day one this thing is going to be able to do stuff. This is another ship from day one that can do stuff. Who is not going to need repairs in this game? Yeah. Everyone is going to need I'm, repairs and refuel <laughs> and rearming. Like everyone. Based on that. Based on that, I'm surprised it's, this ship wasn't sold at the same price as the Genesis. Yeah, right know. off the bat, it's going to make cash. Yeah. Um, and I, I think, uh, look, look, I'll start to wrap this up now, Argo, but I think you would agree with me, based on how much we've done FMF, I would have to say, after the Endeavor, this is my next recommendation, and it's, it, it is in, in the top of the tier. Like, if, if, if the Endeavor's tier one, this is number yeah. two in the list. Um, I, I always, I, I agree. If you if you're a combat if you're someone with combat focus you know some um someone who says i really want to do combat mm. you're nuts if you don't ever have a crucible yeah. because you can actually you know yeah. get with your mates and repair their ships or or go and you know go to where they're crippled and, and repair them yeah and I, I, look, just to put it in perspective with the endeavor the reason why this one just doesn't quite get to the same tier as the endeavor is the endeavor is going to grow heaps and the Endeavor has so much different gameplay where this just has refueling, rearming, and um, repair. Um, and it's more of a logistics. Like, th- this is, like, I know C really loves the, the, the Crusader ships, but I really think this is the ship that he is, you know, how he talks about logistics. To me, this is the ship that I think is um, that type of gameplay for yeah, him. And- so it doesn't quite offer the same as the Endeavor, Um but it, it, it still um, leagues more than some of the others. Sorry, I could go ahead. Yeah, I, I agree. It, it, it doesn't have the same modularity that the Endeavor has, but it does have, I, I think we'll see, rather than having the variants of, you know, the original variant of specific repair and then one that was just kitted out just for doing the refuel rearm, it does have cargo so you can put stuff in there so it can do a limited amount of that. But, you know, one that could do massive rearm and refuel so, you know, refuel and Idris. I also, Idris. I also think it's probably um, one of the most unique looking ship in the game. And what I mean by that is it almost looks like a car to a health ship in a weird way. You know what I mean? Um, it, there is no other ship that is going to look like this. This is going to have a very distinct silhouette um, compared to anything else, like with all the, the dangly arms and the little wings hanging out and stuff like that. It, it uh, To me, there's a lot of positives about this ship. Um, it's it's when the Banu and the Zeon kind of get together and build a ship. Yeah. It's kind of got claws like a Banu. It's got the twizzly bit like a mm. a cartwheel, and it's made by humans. It's not you know, humans. It's not made by aliens. <laughs> so it would love these. Yeah, so I, I'm sure there's probably one or two things Aragon and I have missed here, but uh, let us know in the comments below your thoughts on the Crucible, and if you are not into this ship. Please tell me why you don't like this ship. And, I, and I'm assuming, you tell me if you reckon I'm wrong here, Arrogate, I reckon it's probably just based on the fact that it's that repair, rearm, and refuel. And if they're not into that gameplay, that is why they're turned off by it. And and I, I actually reckon that might be why there's not as many people have brought it, is it's just one of those gameplay types that people are just not into playing that ship repair, as you called it, so to speak, or the re- mechanic. Yeah. Um, but, but I would assume if someone's into, um, medical gameplay, this is definitely medical adjacent. And I actually remember FMS we've done where we've actually recommended this to people based on the fact that they were really into medical. Yeah. And like I said, this is, this is your healer. This is your MMO healer. Yeah. Um, if you're looking at, if you kind of look at it in that type of, uh, traditional MMO game, mm. this is your healer ship. It's the one that you use to get your other, your companions up and running again. Um, Can you imagine one of these trying to take on an Idris and you're repairing your own Idris while it's firing its ray gun? I can fully see that as a thing. Um, uh, yeah, you've got an Idris there with one of these kind of doing repairs to it while you're fighting another Idris. Mm. Um, in the long run, um, the Idris with the repairs going to out 
you know, can take can absorb more damage than the one that's not. But I, to to go to what we're saying, one reason I think you you you're worth getting this ship. A, we know it's going to grow. B, we're almost a hundred percent confident it's going to go up in price. A, yeah. it's going to grow and go up in price. B, when it comes out, it's going to go up in price. It's still three hundred and fifty dollars, I believe. Yep. I, I, I'll add I'll add that to about the endeavor, and I think that's the other thing is this probably won't um, maximize um, its money the potential yep. at the same rate an endeavor will. So where let's just say for example an endeavor tripled in value, this is more likely to double in value. And I'm not don't take me as cricket. I'm just trying to give you an example there, guys. Mm. Um, it, it's not going to um, maximize in value as much as an endeavor. Um, but but this and the Endeavour, there's a reason why we recommend these sh two ships so frequently because they are very clearly undervalued. Hmm. All right, is there anything else you would like to add, Algrid, before we sign I off? I cannot yeah. add any more to that, Matt. That summed mm. it up in the end. Apart from saying, it's the best at what it does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need to get a little emote for that going, I think. On we, need, we need to have a hashtag for that. Yeah. That's our shout-out. Yeah, Paul. and just uh, Paul's That's head or something, yeah. That's right. Best All right. what it does. He's been arrogant. I've been Execute. Please like, subscribe, all that type of jazz. If you like what we do, follow us a little extra on Patreon. Again, um, if you leave hashtag Jaden in the comments below for your chance to win an F7A upgrade and a Super Hornet. Thanks to one of our lovely supporters. All right. And we'll catch you guys in the next one. In the next one. Take care.